Hi. <laughs> it's been a while. I feel like I always say that at the beginning because it's often true. Um, welcome back. Uh, this is the Tiny Needles Nets podcast. This is episode 10. I think I really wanted to do something special for episode 10, but I haven't come up with anything, so um, it's just going to be a regular podcast episode. It's coming on 6 o'clock in Edinburgh, but there's still quite a lot of light. It's been a really warm day, um, and I wanted to talk about all my knits, all my summer knits. I finished a few things. There's some projects that there's updates, but I'm not going to be giving them because they're in time out. And that includes from the podcast. <laughs> um, and I'm filming on my webcam, which I think is potentially better quality than my phone, but it's hard to tell. Who knows what the sound's going to be like, so let's see. Um, but I thought I'd just film a little intro, and then I'm going to take you on a little walk. Let's go on a little walk before we talk knitting. Let's go. A little, just a little walk. Just a little one. some ice water. I've turned my fan off so that hopefully the sound isn't affected by the fact that there's a fan. Um, <laughs> now's your moment if you don't have any ice water, if it's hot where you are, or if you've not been on a walk today, or it's been outside today, or had a cup of tea today. This is your moment. Pause the video, do those things, come back, welcome back, um, <laughs> or not back if you were miraculously prepared with all those things. Um, I'm surrounded by quite a lot of different knitting projects. I don't know if I have loads of energy to talk about all of them in much depth, but I'll do what I can to kind of speed through everything that's happened um, with my knitting since the last time that we were here together, which is like two months ago, some period of time ago. Um, I've been in a little bit of a, and continue to be in, <laughs> a transitional phase in my life, a bit of an unknown transitional phase. Um, I'm not going to talk about it loads, but it has meant that I've been doing a lot of knitting and a lot of startitis type knitting, which I feel like is what I do when there's like a lot going on in my life or a lot of uncertainty. I just am like, must start all the new projects. And it helps, it really does. So I'm very grateful to have this as an outlet, um, but it does mean that I have like lots of new, lots of two particularly new projects that I'm really excited about and all the rest of my projects are just a bit like not that interested anymore but I'll try my best to muster some excitement to show them to you. It's also very weird because I'm filming this on my webcam and I'm just realizing now that the recording like I can see myself but it's slightly delayed so I feel a bit weird watching it so I might just try and look at the camera and not at the screen. <laughs> because it's really weird. Um, anyway, I was looking at my notebook from what I showed you last time, which was, no, that's the wrong, somewhere I actually made some podcast notes 
May 2022, so two months ago, I showed you some finished objects. You know that, you were there, and I showed you some works in progress. The first one was the sweater number 18 by my favorite things, question um, mark. And that is in progress. I've like finished most of the body. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough left for the sleeves. It's in a bag kind of far down, so I'm not gonna show it to you. It's basically just more of the same. Um, I don't love it. It's in a bit of a timeout, so we'll see what happens with that one. Um, I've only got one ball left, about 100 grams, and I've not cast off. Like, I'm doing the ribbing for the body, so I don't know if 50 grams will be enough for each of the sleeves. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You're not seeing right now, because it's in timeout. The second project, works in progress, that I showed you two months ago was the calico socks, and that is now a half-finished object. Um, and it is in one of these bags. Uh, it's in my Perfect Folk Festival bag. Love. Goes quite well with my top, surprisingly. Um, and I must have finished the first one, like, pretty soon after I filmed the last podcast episode. Um, and yeah, I still really like it. Pleased with the colours that I chose. Um, not really that much to say. An enjoyable project. I've never done this like waffle heel before. Um, and I like it, I think, because this is a sport weight and this is a sock weight. So these two colours are... Do I have the bands in here? No, I don't. They're... <laughs> go back to the last podcast to see what they are um but they oh, I wish I could remember it some anyway it's an old sport weight um that I bought in America ages ago and then this is Old Faithful uh West Yorkshire Spinners signature four ply in one of their flowers colorways um which is fun because it's got little flowers on it um so it means that the kind of the heel's a bit bulky because it's in a sport weight but the colours are good, so it's fine. Um, that one I have started the second one. I did the colour work, which is the fun bit. And as you will see, I'm in a bit of a colour work moment at the moment. And I've done most of the heel. So that should be... It's a nice place to be picked up again when I'm interested in knitting socks, which is not at the moment. But at some point, I'll want a little sock project and it'll be there waiting for me. So that, that's one of them. Uh, what else did I show you? Back to my notes. Last time I showed you my half and half wrap, which is finished. I can't remember how close it was to finished last time, but I do remember feeling like we're pretty close. I think I was on the home stretch on just the like really, really, really long rows. Um, and it is finished, but I have not woven the ends in, despite probably finishing it about a month and a half ago. I've also not blocked it. It's just been sitting there basically as a little moth trap. I've been seeing a few moths around the flat. Not loads, but just one or two. And I have, I mean, there's cedar blocks in everything. There's little lavender sachets, little like moth be gone sachet type things. Um, wherever there's yarn, there's a moth repellent. But I still am seeing them so as we'll get into later when I talk about the current knitting that I'm doing um, I'm about to go away for four weeks uh, to down south to see my family and to do a theatre course uh, which I'm really looking forward to but it means that I'm going to be away from my flat for four weeks um, and my plan is to put everything in plastic before I go because just having seen those like one or two moths around I'm like let's let's get get ahead of this um and this <laughs> just sitting there all of this fabric it's so much fabric is just waiting for moths to be a part of it so yes i finished a half and half wrap it's huge it's huge it's huge i did the largest size i did it in jc rennie uh super soft four ply which i liked i really liked knitting with it I'm, the finished fabric, like it's very springy, which is good. It's quite thin, 
which is different from all my other shawls um, and I think will make it good for like really bundling up but it's different from kind of anything that I currently have um, so I'm interested to see how I'll incorporate this into my wardrobe come winter because I've not like I've not worn it because it's been really hot um, and I've also not woven the ends and those two things are related so that's to be woven and blocked it was a really fun knit can't fault the pattern everyone loves it and for a good reason so this is the half and half wrap and this is my only finished object so enjoy it here it is being presented to you in many different ways if you want to know more about the half and half wrap uh, as a project I would recommend um, looking at what is her name Stacy I want to say Stacy she knit she dyes yarn <laughs> people love it what's she called stress knits stress knits channel um talks a lot about the half and half wrap she loves it and kind of got me onto it um and she's got really good videos talking about the project and a lot about like the yarn that it's originally supposed to be in which is the pearl soho linen quill which i can imagine is like a bit maybe thicker a bit like loftier question mark than this which is nice uh but it's just a lot a lot a lot of quite thin fabric which is different i'm sounding like i really don't like it i think it's just because it's in the past and I am very obsessed with my current projects that are in the present so like I said I'm trying to muster excitement <laughs> for things that I finished ages ago when all I want to do is talk to you about my current projects but anyway half and half wrap I would very much recommend watching Stacy's I think is her name at stressness diet die works whatever it's called her videos talking about the project if you're interested because it's a great comfort project and it was a really, really good one for when I was just entering into my little transitional phase and just needed some comfort, needed something simple, needed something kind of endless. This was perfect. And it ended just at the right time when I was ready for a bit more interesting projects. So enjoyable, needs to be protected from the moths. That's, that's, that's finished. And um, also it's whipped up a lot of yarn. So I feel like I might sneeze in a moment. Nothing. We'll leave it be. Right. According to my notes, last time I talked to you a little bit about my plans for the spring sorrel sweater. Now that I have cast on and I've made quite a lot of progress on it, but it is, it is in a timeout because my, my projects that I'm working on right now have become the most exciting thing. But this is the yarn. I'll show you the project in a second. What did I find? The yarn band. Um, it's the, it's a Malabrigo yarn. It's called Susuro. That's the tag. It's backwards, potentially. Um, in the color Tiger's Eye. So it's the same yarn that I made my Kevat sweater in, um, which I think I showed to you last time. Um, and I have worn a little bit, but it's been kind of too hot. Like it's got sleeves and it's like, I'm also struggling how to wear the Kevat sweater just a little bit because I don't really wear loose things on top. Although I say currently wearing something very loose on top. Um, but I just wasn't quite sure what to pair it with. I found like some good outfits that I liked with it, but I'm hoping that when the weather cools down a bit, I'll find some good outfits for it as well as for this sweater, which is by Wool and Pine. Thank you, past self, for writing those notes down. When it comes to the pro more projects that aren't in my notes from last time, we're gonna be very much at a loss for names, patterns, all those sorts of things, but I'll put them down below so you can read them on your own time. But <laughs> this is my Spring Sorrel. Um, I love, 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 loved this yoke detailing. It was just very satisfying to knit, a lot of fun, um, very pretty. Really liked how it worked up. 
Um, I've divided for the sleeves and yeah, I've still got the needles attached. So it is still very much in progress. Um, I've just kind of entered the stage where it's like endless, um, like you're just purling constantly to get this kind of reverse stockinette, I think is what's it, what it's called. Um, I quite like purling now because I, maybe like a year and a half ago, potentially two years ago, some point during the pandemic, <laughs> swapped to Norwegian purling. So I purl without having to lift my hand up like this. Um, which means that purling is basically as easy for me as knitting now, which is huge, huge revelation. Like, I do think that my knitting capabilities skyrocketed after I learned how to Norwegian purl and lip knit with my left hand. Continental knitting, is that what it's called? Things are just not in my head today. Um, yeah highly recommend again if you want to learn how to do that Arne and Carlos got you covered I should start making a note of all the things that I've said that I'm gonna put, put down in the bottom uh but hopefully those things are all there for you um but yeah so like I probably before I learned how to do that I no way would I have chosen to do a sweater that was like constant purling on the body but now it's no problem so I can make things like this which is really lovely I have about this much left. I'm a little bit like, how's that gonna be enough for the whole body and the sleeves? But it's a short sleeve number. So I think from here, it's just gonna be like a little bit of purling and then some ribbing. So most of this will be used up on the body and it's a cropped sweater anyway. So um, I think, again, this is like waiting in the wings, kind of ready to be finished. Um, I feel like I, have kind of two speeds or two modes when it comes to knitting. I'm either like absolute startitis, just like new projects left, right and center, or I'm like, I wanna finish everything. I wanna finish all my projects. So like this and my other sock and the sweater number 18, which we're not talking about, but is there, all maybe have like a week's worth of finishing to do, maybe less, depending on how much I'm knitting that week. Um, and so when I get that bug, they're all just waiting for me. So as much as I think I'm trying to reframe it and think about it that way, rather than you've not finished it, be in trouble. The knitting police are coming for you. No knitting police are coming. And actually I'm setting myself up for success in the future. So, uh, yes, <laughs> I do often get quite close to the end of projects and then I'm like, I need something else. So when I get my finish itis, this will be ready for me and it probably won't take long to do it. So Spring Sorrel by Will and Pine, I already said that. And I said the yarn. Great. Who's a podcaster? Me. 10 episodes in, you think I've got this sorted. I think it's also now been over a year since I started doing projects with knitting, doing knitting podcast again. I don't know. If I could remember these things, I would celebrate them. But... <laughs> Here we are. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Take a sip of water. We're back to our one take wonders. Not quite as one take wondery as last, I was gonna say last week, last time. Um, so there'll be a little bit of editing in this, but probably not that much. <laughs> not that much. Right, I think that brings us to things that did not exist. Well, I guess the spring sorrel didn't exist, but it existed in my mind. It was a plan. Things that did not exist in plan, nor physical existence the last time that we spoke. So, the first thing is actually two finished objects. I lied earlier and said I didn't have any finished objects. I do. Um, again, they're not completely finished in that I've not done the finishing, but the knitting part is done. So, that counts for something. Um, it, hilariously slash interestingly, I don't know, last time I, I did this podcast, I was talking about the pressed flowers shawl and I was like, oh, it would make a great baby blanket. Um, 
you know, I don't know anyone who's having a baby right now, but if I did, blah, blah, blah. I did know someone who was having a baby, but I didn't know that they were having a baby when I filmed that. Wild. I actually now know several people who are having a baby all at the same time. Very weird. Um, clearly something, something in the water in Edinburgh. If you're one of my friends who's having a baby, skip this part. Don't see this, you were never here. If you're not one of my friends who's having a baby, I've made two baby items, uh, which is very fun. I have not done baby items in a while because I've not known anyone who's had a baby. Um, but I did have a pattern that I've wanted to try out for ages. Again, any pattern that has been on my heart for ages, it will have come from the Soul Mama blog. Um, and she must have made this in like 2008 or something for one of her kids. And it's a classic pattern. We all know it. It's the baby surprise jacket. Um, again, this was, I think I made this like after I finished the half and half shawl because I was like, I'm not do quite done with garter stitch yet. Like my little brain, my little soul needs just plain squishy garter stitch. So this came to mind because it's basically garter stitch but with a few increases. For those of you who've not seen this pattern before, um, it's basically just like a little jacket. I mean, I'll show you mine in a second. Um, I'm also laughing at how much it coordinates with my current top. Um, that you knit as a flat piece with lots of like, not lots of, but with kind of increases and decreases at two specific points and a few other different things. I'm not gonna totally give the pattern away. Um, and it comes out looking like a weird bit of fabric and you're like what how is this a jacket but then with a little bit of clover magic it's a little cardigan it's very cute um i used just lots of different kind of fingering weight yarn that i had around uh i think there's some um, that is JC Rennie left over from my half and half, the kind of main colour, like minty that I was using, um, is where short shawl spin is, and the others are just kind of like little minis that I had around. Um, I put buttonholes, but there are no buttons yet. It is tiny. I did follow the like recommended for the smallest size, and I think I used the recommended needles, can't remember. Um, but it's very small. I think this is like newborn only so i'm hoping that my friend has a small baby fingers crossed um and then the other pattern that i made to kind of go with the set and i think i'll probably do some other things because i've got quite a bit of like this color yarn left um is that i made this little pixie hat which i've made before again it was a soul mama featured pattern back in the day um and i just thought it was so cute and it's really really simple um, I've got my yarn in a little knot, I'm just going to ignore that. Um, it's knit flat just with some ribbing and some like faux ribbing that's just like pearl bumps um, on the other side and then you just put these two together. It's a free pattern so but I'll put it down below. And then it's just this like sweet little gnome hat like it doesn't look like that much by itself, but on a baby. Very cute. Here, I can use this ball of yarn as a baby's head. <laughs> Something like that. That's the vibe. Um, so I've made this little hat, which I'm pleased with. And I need to finish those, but the baby's not due for quite a while, so I've got time. Those are my little finished objects. Very happy with these. And again, like filled that hole when I just needed like really simple, really comfort knitting uh, to kind of, to get me through, to get me through. So if you're looking for that, would recommend these patterns. Um, would maybe recommend using a thicker yarn and bigger needles for the baby surprise jacket. I might need to make another one for later on, but it didn't take very long. It was only a few days of knitting. So if it doesn't fit, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> It'll be okay. Um, so yeah. Those are finished. Put those in the finished box. Sip of water. I'm surprised that my cat's not come through. She's been trying to like get in my room all day. Um, and I've had the room, the door closed, and now it's open in case she wanted to come through and 
and nothing. So that's weird. Not that weird. She's probably just sleeping somewhere else. Anyway, <laughs> another project uh, that I've started and not finished and I'm not obsessed with, but after this one, I think we will go, we're getting to the two obsessive projects. So, you know, get hyped. Um, but this is, this is just a plain sock. It's just a plain sock. It's a sock lady pattern. Um, I've forgotten what it's called. I'll put it down below. It's just, it's one for self striping yarn where it's got this kind of like interesting bit at the front just with a few like increases and decreases. And then the back is just stockinette, a little slip stitch heel and then the kind of same on the thing. Um, these are supposed to be my Pride Month knit. Um, because it's a rainbow uh, and I bought this from the yarn shop recently again West Yorkshire spin it's four ply um, but I just wasn't feeling it like I quite enjoyed it it was a good next project after all that garter stitch um, but yeah I think I talked about this before, but I'm just a little bit bored of West Yorkshire spinners four ply. I've been knitting socks out of it for ages and like it's fine it's a good sock yarn it's definitely not my favorite but it's one of the ones that's like the most available um or like the most readily available and it's quite cheap so i've ended up making a lot out of it but i think no more <laughs> i need a break um and actually i found some really great sock yarns which i'm gonna feature soon i'm really just dropping it in uh this episode another sip of water and a little break um i don't know which one to talk about first i'll talk about them in order of when i cast them on just in a minute so i think i talked about this last time uh but i wanted to submit the marit cardigan um and I don't know how much I said. I think I might have said that I was thinking about doing it in JC Rennie and that I was ordering some little samples, which I did. Um, I am new to colour work. I did, uh, what's that purple one with the colour work here? It was a Jacqueline Seaslight pattern. The Sky Star, Starry, <laughs> Sky Starry? What's it called? Um, I can't remember, but the star crossed, star crossed crop jumper thing that was color work, but that was just two color color work. And one of the colors was like a color changing kind of spin cycle dupe. Um, so there wasn't like that much kind of conscious decision on my part that went into it. Um, color work or picking colors for color work is really hard. I didn't realize how hard it was until I tried to do it. So kudos to anyone who does it. Incredible. Don't know how you do it. Well, I do now because I've got it, I've cracked it. I've cracked it, at least for this one project. But it did not take, <laughs> did not take nothing. There were quite a few failed attempts. Um, what I've learned is that colors that look good together when you hold them up in yarn balls do not always look good together when you put them in to the pattern and also that I tried to if you follow me on, me on Instagram you would have seen this but I tried to pull my colors from some of my like old Facebook cover photos just like pictures that I really liked so there was like one that was like of the sea and one that was like of a wall with like lichen on it so which is something that I'd seen other people do where they'd like pulled colors for color work from like nature, from pictures of nature to be like, oh, well these colors go well together. So I'll pick those. Um, and I did that and probably it would have been like, okay. But what I hadn't thought through was that for this particular pattern, the background color makes a really big difference. And I think that's where I kind of like tripped up when looking at colors next to each other and being like, oh yeah, these like four colors look great together, fine. But then when you have to pick one to become the background color, then it just totally, totally changes the dynamic. And it's like, which one do you pick? And those four colors that go together suddenly don't go so well together anymore. 
Um, so I've not got all the little balls that I picked, but I'll show you some of the swatches that were slight failures. They were experiments that I did not then want to make into a full jumper. Um, so the first kind of type of yarn that I picked was the JC Rennie Super Soft 4 Ply because I enjoyed knitting it, my half and half wrap in it so much and it was very soft and I have very sensitive skin. I'm just a very sensitive person when it comes to like textures and things on my body. So I thought, okay, that's a safe bet. I quite like the way it feels. It's quite grippy, so I thought it would be good for colour work. Um, but <laughs> the colours that I ended up with uh actually you know what this is popping way more on the on the camera than it does in real life in real life it just looks like a complete fuzzy mess but you can actually kind of see the pattern on the camera so that tells you something but uh this as a background color not the one um that was the mushroom that was from my half and half wrap i was like oh i love this color it'll great make a great background no. <laughs> a heathered background, not the one. Also, this whole time, I was like convinced that I'd seen the gentle knitter do a marit in like blues and cream. I was like, I basically just want to copy that. But when I searched the gentle knitter marit, she's not made it. She's not made it. And so I was like, someone has made it. And I saw theirs and I really like their colors. Who were they? I couldn't figure it out. I was like, who has done this like different shades of blue and cream merit that I basically just wanted to copy. But I like couldn't picture the colors well enough to just like order those colors that I wanted. It was like, I needed to see the reference. I think I eventually figured out that the person that I was thinking of was, uh, I've forgotten her name at the Cozy Cardigans podcast. Um, And then I knew by the time I found hers, it was too late. I'd already picked my colors. Um, but I think I like what I ended up with potentially better than that original one. You'll see it in a second. But anyway, this whole time I was like, I'm sure there's like someone's and I've seen it and like it's cream and different blues. And I was like, that's what I'm after. But I couldn't just, I couldn't picture it. So I was trying all these different combinations to see what happened. Anyway, I then tried this one, which is like toothpaste background. Definitely the colors popped more. So I was like, okay, we need some sort of like bright white creamy background. That was what I learned from that swatch. Um, and then I also did this one in a brown background to see maybe if I wanted a brown cardigan. I think these colors were from, I can't remember what the picture was of, but these were like one of my picture combo colors. Um, and I think the brown was kind of like the stones. And so I thought maybe that should be like the biggest color. Um, I really do feel like I'm gonna sneeze, but it just doesn't come. So if I'm crinkling my nose in a weird way, that's what's happening there. <laughs> it's just a bit. Anyway, I was like, I don't want a whole brown card again, but again, learned something about kind of contrast and also about this fabric. Um, because after I blocked it, I was like, this is, wasn't quite what I wanted. I, like I couldn't imagine a whole cardigan in this sort of fabric. Again, like I was saying with my half and half wrap, it's it's a very thin four ply. Um, it doesn't have much loft. It's quite kind of flexible, which I'm sure are positive attributes for some projects, but not for this project. Um, so anyway. Those are my JC Rennie ones. After that, I was like, I'm gonna go to the knit shop. I'm going to, I thought I was gonna get more JC Rennie colors and try um, a different approach color-wise, potentially trying to get it more to this uh, blue, different colored blue invented cardigan of my mind. Um, but what I ended up coming back with was not JC Rennie at all. I got some Jameson and Smith, a classic Fair Isle jumper yarn. Um, not my favorite. I've made, I made like a tea cozy out of it. I didn't love knitting with it. Like it's, I mean, it's great. It's very sheepy. Um, 
not, I don't know, there's something about it. It's probably just that it's not soft enough and I'm a little sensitive soul. Um, but what I ended up with was these four colors, which I really liked. I think this was like taking me more in the direction that I wanted to go. Like I liked this having like one color that was really bold and vivid, that appealed to me. Um, and I liked the kind of classic nature of these other three. I think what I was trying to go for is like classic with a bold. Also at this point, I feel like I should point out that the Marit cardigan is a three color color work, but I've seen lots of people, um, including insert name here at the Cozy Cardigans and also um, insert name here at Pearlwise. <laughs> Apologies to both of you. I'm sorry. Your names are just poof gone out of my mind. Maybe they'll come back to me if I try really hard. Um, but they've both made it, I think, like four colours or five colours. And I've seen other people, like looking at people's patterns on Ravelry, um, have made it more colours. So that was what I wanted to do because I don't even copy everyone else. Um, but yeah, so, and this one, I also went in with the knowledge that this is my background colour. That was important to um, make sure that I, you know, had thought about that because before I'd not thought about that. So with these, I did two different swatches um, that are basically the same, um, but just the colors are slightly arranged in different ways. So I think this was the first one that I did, um, which I liked how much the red popped. I liked the way that the crosses were down here didn't like this so much, but that was just an experiment. But I did like the cream at the background, although I wasn't sold on this kind of particular tone of cream. Um, it's a little gray, a little dirty, for lack of a better word, um, than what I was looking for. I wanted something a bit brighter. It's a bit dull um, as a background color, but not so bad in the right direction. Um, and then I also did this one, which kind of included, I think it's this way up, the snowflake motif. So this was the kind of full color work chart swatching. Um, also, as you can see from my edges here, I've been doing the kind of swatching, the faux in the round swatching, where you kind of carry big floats around the back um, and only knit on the front of the swatch to kind of simulate knitting in the round without having to knit in the round. So you're only knitting on the front of the fabric. It also means you're not having to do any pearl color work, which is great and really helps me to make sure that I can actually understand how the color dominance is working, which again is something that I've learned with this project. I now am confident in color dominance, which is great. Um, I feel like I've really cracked color work with this project. Did I speak too soon? I don't know. I've definitely cracked it for this project. Um, but I did not crack it with this swatch. This was not it. I was like, no, no, it's not the one. Uh, fine, not great. I liked this fabric more than the JC Rennie fabric, but it wasn't, again, I think because I knew this was such a huge project. And also, cause I was like, color work takes forever. Like it's really slow going. So I wanted a yarn that felt really nice. Like that was really soft and that like I was really excited about. Like I didn't want it to just be like, okay. I wanted it to be something that I was like, yes. Like I'm enjoying this. It's like making my brain happy, seeing all these colors together. It's making my hands happy, holding this yarn. High asks, but because I mean, it's gonna take so long. Like I've never knitted all over color work, anything. So, you know, I was willing to kiss a few frogs before I found my yarn prints. Uh, I was. Um, so anyway, this, <laughs> this was quite almost there, but not really. Um, but I definitely was like, no, I definitely want a cream background. I think the original one is like cream with brown and blue, um, but not a navy like this, a kind of different blue. Um, and I did like the vivid pop, but I wasn't, for a while I thought about maybe doing this. I don't know. So I did those and then I just kind of let it sit for a while. I thought I'll deal with it later. Just knit on some other things for a while. Um, and then 
I decided that I was going to make the Leaves of Grass shawl um, over the summer. Like I said, I'm going to be away for four weeks. Um, the Leaves of Grass shawl is a shawl I've made before. If you are watching my vlogmas uh, this past winter, um, you'll remember when I was looking through kind of all of my old knitting projects that I found at home, uh, the Leaves of Grass shawl was in there. Very much moth eaten like never have I seen something so sad in my life um so sad very sad times I made the leaves of grass shawl when I was 18 was like seven years ago um and I made it in like a lace weight yarn that I found in a knitting shop near where we were staying on holiday um and it was the first time I'd ever done like lace patterns I kind of wanted um a shawl for my battery's about to die. <laughs> oh no. I'm gonna leave you on a little uh, cardigan cliffhanger. It's not that much of a cliffhanger for you because the video will just clip to the next bit, but I'm gonna have to pause a bit and charge the device and I will see you in like a second. Hello, Saturday morning editing Jessica here to explain a little bit about what you're gonna see now. Um, the last clip that I just filmed, um, when I came back to my computer, to my little device to continue filming, it looked like I had deleted it. Um, so I, in a panic, uh, thought that I had deleted that 40 minutes of all of my projects that you had just seen. Um, and so I refilmed all of those projects along with the two projects that I hadn't spoken about yet. Um, so I, <laughs> what I've done is kind of Frankenstein that together so that I'm just talking about the two projects that I hadn't talked about yet and deleting all the bit where I'm quite poorly um, re-saying everything that you've just seen. Um, so if I've missed a bit or sometimes there's just some sentences I like couldn't cut through, um, where I make reference to like two sock projects that you haven't seen yet, but you have, they're the ones from before, um, or talk about things being deleted or repeating myself. That's what that's about. Um, and if there's odd jump cuts, please forgive me. I did the best I could. Um, I also wanted to briefly apologize for the audio. I think I'm going to pin a little comment below also saying about this, just so you guys know, I'm aware, um, that, that buzzy noise is back. Um, I think it's because of what I filmed it on. I'm not gonna film on my webcam anymore. Also apologies for the slight like in and out of uh, exposure-ness that's happening that might kind of be resulting in a little bit of like flickering or flashing. Um, I'm gonna try and put like a flash warning on this episode just in case that's something that might be dangerous for somebody. Um, but basically this has been a technological mess. So thanks for sticking around. Um, I hope that you enjoy the next like 30 minutes of video. I think that, um, I've got for you. I really love my Marit cardigan. So I talk about it a lot, um, but hopefully it will be helpful to any of you who are wanting to do it, which is interesting to those of you who want to hear about those things. Um, so yes, apologies for it being a bit weird. Sorry about the audio. We'll try better next time, but thanks for being here and back to Friday night, Jessica, and I will see you later. Goodbye. <laughs> summer knitting. Let's talk summer knitting. Um, let's have a little chocolate milk first. I'll take a little breath. Um, so, like I said before, I'm going to be away for four weeks um, and I wanted to pick a summer project that I was excited about that I could take with me that would be kind of like a lot of knitting um, and for me to my mind and also to Elizabeth Zimmerman's mind as she says in her I've got her like little book hang on this one the knitter's almanac um, in the middle here is her suggestion for the month of July, um, I think, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, July. A shawl. Good travel knitting. And then there's a bonus one roll buttonhole recipe. <laughs> 
Um, so this is the Elizabeth Zimmerman pie shawl construction. Um, I'd imagine it's something to do with the number pie, but I have to say I don't know how it got the name. It's just a shawl with concentric circles of holes, as she calls it. Um, and I'm not following this particular method, although I'm sure this would be a very nice shawl. But this reminded me that I had previously, in another life, made a shawl that was based off of this pie construction called the Leaves of Grass Shawl by Jared Flood. Um, and this was a shawl that I made when I was 18. Um, I made it in some like lace weight yarn, uh, just white, that I got from a yarn shop that was near where my family was staying on holiday that summer. Um, and it was the first time I'd ever done lace. It was the first time I'd ever done like a big project like that. And I just remember that it was like the perfect project. It was great. The pattern was like just complicated enough, but like it got memorizable towards the end. So I didn't kind of constantly have to be referring to my notes, but it was like more interesting than just like something plain. Um, and most importantly, you got like a lot of knitting for your buck because it was just like so much yardage that you were getting through. Um, so anyway, a great summer project as Elizabeth Zimmerman knows. So I was like, right. Also crucial to this story is that that shawl sadly got eaten by moths. Um, if you're watching my Vlogmas, you might have seen this. Uh, if you've not, you can go back to my Vlogmas, uh, the episode, I think quite towards the end, uh, where I talk about my old knitting projects um, and things that I found at home, like my early knits. Um, it got destroyed by moths. <laughs> and I was very sad about it um, because I just found a very like romantic vision of Oh, I made this shawl the year I was 18 and I thought like oh I could you know use it for my children and whatever whatever quite sad about it and also I just really enjoyed the pattern and it was quite nice so I've always wanted to re-knit it and I was like this is the summer this is the summer to re-knit it so I went along to everything's coming out of my brain because it's 8 30 at night and I've already said all this before, <laughs> or most of this before. I went to Ginger Twist, the other knitting shop in Edinburgh, with the intention of buying some lace weight yarn to make this shawl. Um, I'd had the pattern for ages, I knew I already had the pattern, so I hadn't actually looked at the pattern before going. I was just like, I think I had, but just to look at the yardage, like I'd not even looked at the suggestive wool or anything. I was just like, I made it in lace before, I'll make it in lace again, that's fine. So I went in with the intention of finding some lace weight yarn and uh, the Ginger Twist yarn shop has a lot of hand dyed yarns, which were all really nice. And I kind of hoped to find a color there that I liked. And there was one that I did quite like. It was kind of a kind of green, like a tree green. I think it was called Oregon was the colorway. Um, but the texture just wasn't, again, with the Marit, because I'm like, it's a lot of yardage. When you're making a shawl, I think it's like 1400 yards that is the whole shawl. But like, I'm gonna be touching this for a long time <laughs> while I'm making it. And also I was like, if it's the only project I'm bringing with me for four weeks, I want it to be like yarn that I'm really hyped about. Like, I don't want it to be just something that I'm like, like the color I was hyped about, but the texture was just a bit too silky. I was like, I wanted something a bit cheapier. Don't know. Um, so I was looking around. I was in there for ages. Um, big thanks to, I think Kathleen is your name. Who knows? Names are not my forte this evening, so apologies if that's not correct, but who was in the shop and was really, really, really helpful. Um, and actually helped me find my merit colors, which we'll get to. Um, <laughs> anyway. I was looking and looking and looking and I was like comparing these ones. There was this like West Yorkshire Spinners like silk one that I thought might be the right one. Oh, that's my cat making some noise. Um, and it wasn't, I was just really taking my time. I was also, I had like, my main quest was to find for the leaves of grass, but I did have a side quest of like, if there's the right thing for the Marit, 
that would be great because I also really wanted to start that because like I said I was out of my garter stitch phase I was ready for something more engaging I was like I need more complicated patterns something a little bit more challenging um anyway in my <laughs> in my struggles um we looked up the pattern and um the person who was working there was like look this is it's in loft we have loft brooklyn tweed loft if you don't know it's a yarn um but only two skeins of it but it's very similar to this other yarn that we have which is i'm gonna pull it over because i can never say it because i have knit with this before for the gudrun johnson test knit that i did about a year ago in this same yarn and it's a BC Gun yarn. It's Similar Melange. Similar Melange. That's it backwards. And this is the color that I ended up with. Surprise! Um, it's coming off. That's not quite the color. It's close to that. I'm gonna make it get a more accurate color read. It's a little bit. I want to say like it's coming across a little blue here it's like mostly green it's like a strong forest green um maybe I'll insert some footage over this that I took with my phone um but this is a color that I ended up with and oh it's called I think it's called pine there you go it's it's like trees um and this was very close to the kind of Oregon lace weight color that I was eyeing up um but this is a sport weight yarn. Like it's not at all what I was going for, but the pattern called for loft, which is like a fingering weight yarn. But like, I looked at the two skeins that they had there and we were kind of comparing them and it's basically the same. Like loft is a very like heavy fingering weight yarn. It's like definitely more closer to a sport weight yarn. So I think this is a really good dupe. I'm very happy with it. Um, I've cast on the Leaves of Grass shawl this morning. Um, I just like needed a morning in bed doing some knitting. I was like in bed for like six hours or something. Six hours? That seems like too long. I don't think I can do maths. From, I was in till like noon. I was there for a long time doing this knitting, which I don't usually do because I usually get a bit antsy and restless if I'm in bed for too long in the morning, but I was just enjoying myself and this pattern was very much to blame. So this is my start for the Leaves of Grass shawl. As you can see, I've done the kind of opening flower bit, which in my first iteration, I made a few mistakes on it, but because the um, you start with like a loop, like a disappearing loop cast on, and oh my goodness, I found that so complicated when I was 18, like, I mean, understandably, because it's very complicated. And I was also doing it on like double pointed needles instead of on a magic, magic circle, magic loop, that's what it's called. And the whole thing was just so fiddly that I was like, look, I can live with the mistakes. It's just the middle of the shawl. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna move forward, which I regretted when I got to the like 400 stitch count you know circles at the end and I was like but the middle like it just didn't look like anything it just looked like a whole bunch of kind of holes whereas now I think I've very much got it correct which is really nice and then I'm on to the kind of section b uh which is just some little kind of like diamonds and I'm really enjoying it I'm knitting it on the suggested needle size, which I definitely didn't do last time because I knit like it was a true lace weight that I use. So I must use like three again, true to my name and knit on some tinier needles than was suggested. Um, but this time I'm using the recommended needle size, which was a 3.5 or a US four for the cast on and then for the section, like the first section. And then you move up to a uh, four millimeter or a US six for the rest of it. Um, and I love this yarn, it's really soft. I loved like knitting with it before. I'm using my Chagu needles, which I love. It's just a very pleasant knitting experience. And I'm glad that I've set myself up with this for the summer. I think it's gonna be a really nice um, summer knit to take with me. Um, 
However, because um, it's not in lace weight, it's in sport weight, what I've ended up with is actually quite a lot of yarn to get the yardage. Um, I think I have nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. I have eight. Um, so I'm definitely not gonna be packing light on my holiday, but that's fine. Um, it's all right. <laughs> And I do also have a swift and ball winder, but I've actually just been really into hand doing my balls. Hand doing my balls, because sounds... <laughs> I've been really into hand winding my yarn. There we go. Um, you can all get your minds out of the gutter. Uh, I'm just quite enjoying that, don't know why. Just am. So, that is summer project number one. I think shawls make great summer knitting projects. I mean, nothing revolutionary. Florals for spring, etc., etc. Um, but I'm pretty pleased with it. And I would have never thought to do it in like a heavy fingering weight slash sport weight yarn. But I actually really like how it's knitting up. It's quite like robust. I love the color. It makes me feel like I'm camping and that I'm in the forest, even though I'm gonna be in the city on very, very sweaty trains and in very, very sweaty dance studios for three weeks. Um, but I'm also probably being quite over ambitious about the amount of time that I'm gonna be spending knitting when I'm gonna be uh, just doing like dancing and acting training all day. <laughs> but you know, there's lots of quiet moments in the theater, a lot of waiting. So this will be there with me. And I've got this uh, stitch markers from um, whoever did my advent, 100 grams. I've totally forgotten. But if you remember who did my advent, then lucky you. You know where I got this from. There you go. That's my current obsessive project that I was working on today. Very excited. Now, I will finally reveal to you the Marit cardigan that you've probably already seen in the cover picture, but let's just pretend. Play along with me. Um, it's in the same yarn, surprise, um, <laughs> as the shawl, which is weird, but I guess also makes sense because, again, it's a kind of fingering weight project. Um, it's exactly the same yarn. It's my main colour, just for the main colour. Um, while I was looking at the color that I ended up picking, or the yarn that I ended up picking for the shawl, I saw these 100 gram balls of 100 gram skeins of kind of natural colors. Um, it is color 02, if you're interested. It's the same BC Gone brand. Um, and it's like, it's two different colors applied together, um, a kind of like, lighter cream and then a slightly darker cream applied together um, and I just really like it I think it's really nice it's incredibly soft I knew I would like it because I'd made that shawl with it before um, I didn't necessarily want to have my two summer projects be exactly the same yarn because I like a bit of variation but there is variation in my contrast colors and I'm pretty happy with that so let's do the big reveal. I'm also actually using a real project bag instead of a tote bag for once, so that's fun. Um, I don't know what bitch to show you first. So, again, another suggestion from the very helpful uh, person at Ginger Twist was that even though it's not quite the same weight, that the John Arbor Exmoor sock might be a good yarn choice. Now, I'd heard of this before, from Katie at the Green something podcast. Um, I think a lot of their designs use this sock. They've got some sort of like connection with this. And I always like the way they described it. It's a mixture of like, I think like four different wools or something. I'll pull out the band. So this is the band, Exmo sock. Um, it is Exmo Blueface Corridale nylon 10% nylon and 10% a brand that I a brand a brand of sheep a uh what are they called a breed of sheep that I can't pronounce it's z w a r t b l e s 
Um, and it's like some of it's super wash treated, some of it's not super wash treated. It's definitely thinner. It's definitely a four ply, not a sport weight um, or a fingering, but it, all, it works really well because it's just the contrast color. And um, so it's all fine. It all comes out in the wash or it all comes out in the swatch. So the colors that I picked in homage to my idealized lots of different blues imagined Marit were these four colors three different blues and then a bold which I felt was kind of similar how's the best way to show you there you go similar to the um kind of bright red in the previous swatches I felt like this was kind of doing the same job but was like just a little bit closer so it wasn't such a like shock just a little bit more calm and um, and I mean I'm really enjoying knitting with this yarn it may be my new favorite sock I think I was saying earlier either in this clip or another clip who knows um that I'm a bit done with the West Yorkshire Spinners four ply um I'm just a bit bored of it now would be a really good moment for me to show you my two sock patterns sock projects but I will finish talking about the Marit and then we will move on to that um the world's longest discussion on one cardigan so I'm trying to find my swatch to show you because I actually did a lot of swatching and I want I want recognition for that um so this was the swatch that I did and these are the colors that I've picked so you may not like them but I like them <laughs> this is my decision um, and these are the colors that I went with I did this swatch um, kind of as a trial for different sections I didn't necessarily think that I'd do the whole thing this way mainly because I you can see I've swapped around the kind of navy and the light blue here and here um, for which one was the cross and which one was the kind of like middle bit and I thought I would like pick one or other of these to go for um, and then I've got the kind of teal color doing the crosses and then the kind of greeny lichen color doing the snowflakes um, but actually I really liked how this looked and this you know by swapping them like this I get a more kind of even distribution of the yarn and um, so eventually I decided to use that I did do one other swatch where after I finally found I think the one that I've been thinking of this whole time um, which was Mel at Cozy Cardigans is uh, Marit and saw that she had done it was like lots of different blues and then a brown so I brought in my brown from the Jamison and Smith pile and kind of tried that and I didn't hate it um, but I, th I for a while I was like oh maybe I'll do this but eventually I was like no I want to do this this is this is it so I will show you what I've done. I've been started this maybe like a week and a half ago um, and I've been just very obsessive with it uh, which has been really nice uh, and also I feel like it's the first time that like Fair Isles really like clicked for me um, especially with like the increases on this sleeve I just felt like I really got it. Um, I did kind of get a lot of help by looking at other people's uh, Maritz um, in various stages of doneness, uh, particularly I really got a lot of help from the Pearlwise podcast um, looking at her early episodes um, so that was very helpful thank you for other people who kind of document uh, your progress um, but yeah this is unblocked first sleeve finished the one thing that I don't quite understand based on the pattern is how you do the kind of facing right at the end um it kind of confuses me and I'm also not 100% sure what kind of join I want to do when I eventually join it to the body I'm wondering about maybe doing some sort of like three needle bind off with the live stitches instead of knitting the facing and then sewing that on um, I think I've heard other people do that but I don't know so at the moment I'm just leaving it kind of on waist yarn and then I'll see once I've done the whole body and the cutting into it and all that sort of stuff what I want to do with the sleeve but so this is the first one finished um, it 
it potentially looks a little short depending on how big the body is but I compared this to my swatch which was blocked and it does my swatch is like a fair bit longer um, for one repeat than this is so I think that this will block out a little bit longer is my hope but if not I've got the live stitches so it's fine um so yes this is the first sleeve finished very much is what I'm wearing I'm really pleased with it and I'm really glad that I kept the kind of difference the like swapping in the light blue and the dark blue crosses I think it looks really nice um, and I wouldn't have thought to do it if I'd not kind of tried that out on my swatch. So pleased with that. Um, I'm now knitting the second one. I'm knitting it inside out using the kind of, um, I don't know if there was a specific method, but I'm knitting it inside out to kind of keep the floats loose, especially around the edge. I started knitting it right way around um, and could really feel myself like keeping it quite tight on that edge. So I was like, nope, I'm gonna flip it around and it, looks complicated but it's really really simple you're still knitting you know on this side you're not at all doing it backwards or like purling the whole thing it's just that you flipped it so instead of knitting like do 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 you're knitting do 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 if that makes sense probably someone else can describe it better than that in an actual tutorial or something but this is not a tutorial this is me rambling for now almost an hour and I've still not shown you all my projects but yes this is this is good I'm really enjoying it I wasn't going to take it with me um on holiday but I'm enjoying it so much that I think I probably will and also it's just nice to have a bit of variety with the project so I did go back to Ginger Twist and bought four of these I think I'm probably only going to need to use four total. So I already had one and I bought four more. Um, but I was like, just like the amount that the pattern said that I needed was like almost exactly four balls. And because I'd already done those two swatches and I'm quite like a tall lady, I might need extra for the sleeve. So I just bought another one and I like it so much. And it's relatively inexpensive. I think it's like 12 pounds. 13 pounds around there for 100 grams a lot cheaper than loft I'll tell you that much <laughs> and basically the same having touched them together highly recommend if you're looking for a loft replacement really good um but yes that's the merit and that I think is maybe where I'm gonna end I don't think I have much talking left in me. It's almost nine o'clock and I need to go to bed. I gotta go to bed. I gotta go to bed. I put on the other half of my pajamas and go to bed. Um, I actually haven't been sleeping in these pajamas because they're new and I don't wanna spoil them. They're not ready to, they're my daytime pajamas. Guys, I don't know if you have daytime pajamas. If you're in the point in your life where you have daytime pajamas, I do and they're very cool so highly recommend some things I just wanted to mention one thanks for sticking with me during this chaotic episode if you've watched all the way to the end I appreciate you sticking with me I know it's been a bit here there and everywhere um I'm interested to see how I find it when I'm editing uh not that there'll be that much editing but you know Thanks for sticking with me. Second thing, I've been really enjoying like knitting books at the moment. Um, not like pattern books, but like books about knitting. Like I've got an audiobook subscription to this thing called Scribd, which I really cannot recommend enough. Like you just get unlimited audiobooks, it's great. And also like ebooks and also sheet music, which for that alone has kind of made it worth it for me. Um, because if I want to learn a song, they're all there, which is great. Um, not all of them, but pretty much everything that, I mean, I've not, there's not been something that I've wanted to learn that hasn't been on there yet. Um, but they also have a lot of like knitting, cozy knitting murder mysteries, which I love. Um, and also knitting memoirs, which I'm really enjoying. 
uh, I can't think of specific ones, um, except that I've been listening also to like anything that they have by Stephanie Pearl McPhee that's on there. Um, and they've been great. I really enjoyed them. And I've also read Things I Learned from Knitting in physical book copy. I found it in the charity shop. Just been really into it recently. So let me know in the comments what's your favourite knitting book that's not a pattern book. If you have one, let me know. Third thing, new podcast I found that I really liked. It's called Heavyweights or Heavyweight. If you put Heavyweight, then I'm sure it will come up. It's from, I think, Gimlet Media. And it's just like people telling stories about their lives, but slightly with an investigative journalist angle. Like if people there's like someone from their past that they like always had a question about or that sort of thing or like something that never quite made sense and then the podcast guy comes and like sorts it all out and like answers all the questions it's very interesting quite like abruptly emotional at points um but I've just been really really enjoying it so that's a new find um, and also thanks to everyone who gave like TV recommendations last time. I found a new hyperfixation TV show and it's Grey's Anatomy, which is surprising to everyone. Definitely not the sort of thing that I thought would be my thing, but I'm loving it. I'm obsessed. I'm enjoying it very much. So that's it. That's my updates. Um, I think that's everything. I'm going to stop this now and just hope 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 that it saves and that I can deliver it to you in a neat little package soon I hope you're having a lovely evening a lovely morning a lovely afternoon and um, thanks for watching as always and I will see you probably in September or late August or on Instagram all the time so <laughs> I'll yeah I'm gonna just close this out and I will see you all later goodbye